Song of Solomon, chapter 7, as we go through the entire Bible. Now, we left off in chapter 6, the groom, Solomon, speaking about his, his bride. Jesus Christ speaking about his bride. And we continue into chapter 7, Jesus speaking about his bride. So verse 13, that paragraph mark in, in chapter 6, is still the Lord Jesus Christ speaking about the bride, peace, to armies. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter. Okay, that's the bride. The groom speaking about the bride. How beautiful are thy feet. with shoes and it's remarkable that we go to Romans 10 15 to show you the impact of what we're reading about the church in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in the church Romans 10 15 how shall they teach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet, right? Feet with them that preach the gospel of peace. What was that last verse that we read in chapter six? Remember I told you, stay where you are right there, but remember I told you, show them light meant peace. Uh, I'm going to back up, but let me just say, if, you, if you're too busy in the, in, the, in the pagan holidays, you're not going to learn what the Bible says. Now, we're at Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Let's run over to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. I'm going to tell you that the, the King James Bible is inspired. The Word of God. Absolutely. I believe the, the chapters and the verse numbers are inspired too. I believe the King James is the very word of God and I have my own copy. Ready? Ephesians 6, 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Back to Song of Solomon. So verse 13 of chapter 6, return, return, O Sulamite. We're coming back one day behind Jesus. Sulamite means peace. Return, return, that ye may look upon thee, that ye will see in the Sulamite, as it were, the company of two armies. As it were. Maybe the, the, the vast amount of the bride coming back on, on Jesus Christ after maybe we're just such a numeral company it looks like two armies how beautiful are the feet with shoes and what is the, the the shoes of the bride of jesus christ jesus said go in all the world and preach the gospel how is the bride become the bride during the church age? by believing in the gospel I don't see Jesus in, in in the old. I don't read the Old Testament, some Christians say. Man, we just saw Jesus Christ. We just saw the bride. There she is. How did Solomon in 1014 BC write what Paul was going to write in AD? O princess daughter, the joints of thy thighs are like jewels. And you know where your thighs are? The jewels, precious. The work of the hands of a cunning workman. And cunning, you know, it's not the, the, the word of today, it means slicking off. That means a detailed worker. Who is the detailed worker of the thighs of the bride of Jesus Christ? God Himself, Jesus. Bible says we shall be as and we, we will be given a brand new body. That ain't the body of a Christian today before the judgment seat of Christ. That's the body of Jesus Christ after the judgment seat of Christ as jewels. Gold, 
silver, precious stones. Thy navel is like a round goblet, and that's the only time that word shows up, which wanteth not liquor. There's no liquor or alcohol in the bride. Thy belly is like a heap of wheat set about the lilies. You know, it's, it, there's, there's piles of wheat. Now, in so Song of Solomon, lilies is found in six verses. Lilies is found throughout the entire Bible, ten verses. So ten verses in the Bible and six of them are in the in Song of Solomon. Now look at that. Six, the Song of Solomon, six times more lilies found in the book of Solomon than the entire book of the Bible. Now, in relation to the lilies and Solomon, and let's go to another nugget of the King James Bible when you rightly study the Word of God and you're not made ashamed. When you get out of the nonsense and foolishness of the world, let's go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And another nugget in the Bible. And you just think, well, you know, the Holy Spirit is playing Scrabble. And he's got this, he's got seven titles, and he's gonna make a word that makes the, the most valued word on the game board. That's how the Holy Spirit does it. That ain't true. Now watch this, Luke chapter 12. Verse 27, consider the lilies. I told you, lilies is only 10 times throughout the whole Bible. Six times in the book of Solomon. So this is one of the four times in the Bible that's not found in the Song of Solomon. But what? Now consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon and lilies. I got to get off with this. We're going to celebrate the time of Jesus' birth around December 25th. And I get off that mess. I try to preach the truth. I try to teach the truth. And if you don't want it, you don't want it. But look at the nugget. Uh, you know, consider the lilies how they grow, toil and spend not. Yeah, yeah, so that Solomon go hey, if God clothes the grass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the cross references that goes all the way back to Song of Solomon. The book of Song of Solomon, Jesus. Man, there's more to the Bible than pagan in the world of ism. Thy two breasts are like two young rolls that are twins, beautiful animals. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory, strong. I know, animal activists and that wouldn't like the, the thing of ivory, but well, I don't care. It's a strong, it's a valuable neck. Thy eyes, like fish pools, only place that word shows up in Heshbon. And I would assume that when you look out to those those fish pools, you, know, you look, it may look oh, wow, corner fish. Have you ever just seen a lake or a pond of water, and just how the sun reflects off it? By the gate of Bath Ribbon. So a detailed place that that was in the time of Solomon. It had to have been a beautiful place for Solomon to say, "Your eyes." By the gate of Bath Ribbon, thy nose. Is as the Tower of Lebanon. Uh, okay, that may be a little strong, maybe big nose, but which look at towards their mat. A Tower of Lebanon. I don't know how many towers are Lebanon, but he says the one that looking towards the mask is that's what your nose is like. Wouldn't it be funny if there was a double tower? To double nostrils? I don't know. 
thy head upon these like Carmel. And you look to Mount Carmel. The shape of Mount Carmel, Solomon writes. Maybe you, maybe you want to go take a look at Carmel. Maybe that's what our head's going to look like. I think a lot of Christians have their heads dipped in Carmel with nuts. The hair of thy head like pur like purple, not purple. What's purple? It's a color of royalty. It's an expensive color as scarlet. It's not purple. You know, that's the same thing. Well, the Holy Spirit must be the, must be a dove because it came down. No, it, it did not say the Holy Spirit came down as a dove. You didn't read the scriptures. I would assume if, if a worldly, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the name, I can't think, of a worldly church were to go into the book of Solomon, chapter 7, and see, like purple, I would see the next week a lot of worldly Christians be going into their mega church, that's what I was thinking of, and they'd be having purple hair. Like the Catholics say, John chapter 6, or were to eat the literal eating the body and blood of Jesus Christ. No, it is fine royalty hair of expense. The king is held in the galleries. How fair, how pleasant art thou, O love for delight. That's Jesus Christ describing his bride. That ain't the bride in the Laodicean church age. That ain't the bride that Jesus said you lost your first love. This thy stature. It's like to a palm tree, upright, strong. Thy breast, a cluster of grapes. The shape, the form of the grapes. Ever see the grapes? I said, I will go up to the palm tree. I'll go up to my wife, to the palm tree. I will make, I will take hold of the boughs thereof. He's going to go up, he's like her to a palm tree. He said, I'm going to go up to that palm tree. I'm just going to put my arms around her. Now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine. The smell of thy nose like apples. Apple is a, is a infrequent word in the Bible. I'm going to show you something in a minute. The roof of thy mouth like the best wine for my beloved. Now, you think for Jesus Christ, you think that would be alcoholic wine? That's new wine. Our mouth and our breath will be like fine wine. My beloved again. John called the beloved apostle. That goeth down sweetly. Our mouths. What are we going to look like when we get to glory? It's in the Bible. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, chapter, chapter 7. How do you not know what we look like? There it is. You're too busy trying, trying to defend Christmas and Easter, and you miss all the other treasures in the Bible. That go it down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Now let me show you something here. Look at the end of verse 8. Thy nose like apple. The end of verse 9. Thy lips of those that are asleep to speak. Do you see the imitation there? We have Christ. We have the Antichrist. Do you see the anti-bride in a character called Snow White? That bit the apple and fell asleep and then came her prince to give her a kiss and wake her up and they rode off on a white horse. Where do they get these ideas? Because the devil knows the Bible. And the devil whispers into the ears of his people. Write this story. It's really about Jesus and his bride, but let's get the Christians in all the world fascinated. In junk. 
that the Christian will be more fascinated in Snow White, Prince Charming. <coughs> What's the bride look like? Now the bride speak, verses 10 to 13. I am my beloved's, and his desire is towards me. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter, your, your, your typical Baptist woman does not like this expression. Genesis chapter, we're going all the way back. Genesis chapter 3, unto the woman he said, I will multi greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And Paul writes to the church, let, let the wives be subject to the husbands. There it is. Let the husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Look at Solomon showing forth before Paul writes. Look at Jesus Christ showing us the song of Solomon. Look at Paul showing us the song. Don't listen, don't say Paul onlyism and none of the Old Testament is for us. Listen, this matches what Paul writes and what Paul wrote. He listen, when Paul wrote, he quoted from the Old Testament because there was no New Testament. The whole entire, now you got to rightly divide because there are things for the Israel. There are things for the church. And there are things for the Gentiles. you got to rightly divide. Come now, my beloved. The fellowship's in verse 10. Come now, my, you're to be looking for the blessed hope and the glorious period of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13. You know what a lot of Christians are looking for? They're not looking for the, for the glorious appearing, the great and the blessed hope of Jesus. They're looking for the signs of Matthew 24. They're looking for the prophecy. And the word in the end times because all the prophecy. What about Jesus? Oh, yeah. Then Jesus is going to come. We want the sideshow. We want to be like... Uh, I forget who, who Pilate was talking about, but we I think it's Herod. We want to be, I think it's Herod. I think he said he wanted to see Jesus do, do a miracle. That's what the Christians want. They want the sign shows to sell because that's what the church has given them. The church has given them entertainment and come, come, my beloved. Not, not come the earthquakes. Not come to volcanoes. Come, Jesus. Let us go forth into the field. Into the field. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Uh, this Bible won't let me open. The field's a type of the world. Matthew 13, 38. The field is the world. The field is the world. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Let us go forth into the field. The field's the world. It didn't say bring the field into us. It didn't say bring the field into the congregation. Let us go into the field. What did Jesus say? Go in all the world. What's, what does the church today delight to see? Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the... What's the bride? What is the, what is the scriptural tense of the bride? Let us go forth into the field. So when you sing, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. You got an unscriptural song. The bride says, let us go. Jesus says, go into the world. He didn't say, come on. I can't even say what, what Jesus would say to bring them in. In John chapter 4, he said the, the, the fields are white under harvest. The fields. In 
It's soul winning. Let us lodge in the villages. You say, how's? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and thou shalt be saved in that house. And they met in, in, in Philemon's house, and they met in this house, and they met in that. It doesn't say house. It doesn't say church house. Go into the world. You know what Jesus did in John chapter 4? He went into their city and abode in their city and taught and preached, and they believed. I don't deal with the Old Testament. I don't read. Uh, yeah, I can see. You don't read the book of Acts either. The church is the house. The world is the field and the villages. Let us. That's the bride saying to Jesus. You know what the church says? Let's just go get it. And then we can put a little notch on our belt. And we can fill we can take our little notebook, our little log book, and we had 26. We had 37. I only had three. And they go out in the field without God, without Jesus. Let us get up early to the vineyards. You know what the vineyards are in the Bible? It's Israel. I thank God I got a missionary and support for, for the Jewish people. Let's go into vineyards. Let's see if the, if the vine, that vine is Israel. And the Gentiles are grafted into that vine. Let's see the vine flourish. You know, that's what Paul did. You know, Paul, I, I forget he said to Silas or. He said, let's, let, let's go back into cities and let's see how the churches are doing. It's edification. It's edifying the brethren. Let's see how they're doing. Oh, man, I hear I hear the church in Corinth. Man, I hear that church is all messed up, man. We, we got to get back there. We got to find out what's going on. We find out this church, they're going back to the law. We haven't heard from this, this group of people in this city. Let's go find out what's going on over there. It is, you're going out witnessing and they're getting saved and you're growing them in the Lord and you're edifying, you know, to see how things are going. Whether the tender grape appear, are they producing new grapes, new fruit? You know what kills? You know what's killing churches? Have been killing churches. Will kill churches in the lives of seeing church age. No evangelism. And that preacher gets up to the pulpit and he preaches to the people and they die off, and no new grapes come in. I know I've heard the stories. And the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. Plural. You want, well, I love Jesus. Do you witness? I let my light shine. Do you have any fruit? I am the light. You don't love Jesus unless you go out there and, and get out there planting watering. Jesus said, you don't love me if you don't keep my words. We're reading the words of God. We're supposed to be, doing, be doers of the word. And not here is only deceiving yourselves. And then the reward, verse 13, the mandrakes give a smell at our gates and all manner of pleasant fruits. Are, are you gonna, is there fruits? Is your Christian life producing fruits or are you a nut? But then again, a nut is a fruit. Men are likened to trees. And there's going to be many Christians at the judgment seat of Christ, and they're going to be them trees that had no fruit at all. Even a, 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 a maple tree. You say, well, a maple tree doesn't have any fruit, but it's got sap. You're going to have cherry trees. You're going to have apple trees. You're going to have pear trees. And there's going to be a lot of weeds at the judgment seat of Christ. The plants are just cursed. And they don't produce nothing. And bramble. 
worried hay or stubble. At least hay is good for animals. But it's something that burns at the judgment seat of Christ. New and old. New. Go out in the field, get new ones. Go out there, plant and water. And cultivate the old ones. Which I have laid up for thee. Jesus. Oh, my beloved Jesus. The bride speaking. We are in the church age, the lad to see in church age that there are going to be many Christians out of this period who are going to walk around the streets of New Jerusalem and there are going to be no crowns at all. They won't find a speck of gold. They won't find a, a sliver of silver. And they won't even find a little precious stone. There's no fruit. Be thankful that the church age is not in the law. Because John the Baptist said, under the law, if the tree doesn't produce any fruit, chop it down, cast it in the fire. That's not the church age. But the bride speaks, I am supposed to produce fruit. He says, Stolly, how are you doing with your fruit? I don't know. I just go out and plant and water. What is the results of, of the farmer's market? I don't know. I just go out and plant in the water. You, you don't give an It doesn't say invitation. It says just plant in water. What farmer stands out in any field? Say, All right, come on, plants. You want to you grow? Come on. All you fruitful, come on up to the barn yourself. No. It's Jesus Christ that calls the harvest. So there's another beautiful picture. We got one more chapter of the bride and the bridegroom, and the bridegroom and the bride speaking. Now, I've heard from many. I heard recently, uh, and the allusion to the song of song. It's a off the wall book. You know, it's kind of sexually. Okay, keep your mind in the gutter. We've gone seven chapters so far. Look at the nuggets we've learned about the bride and the bridegroom. Glory to God. 